taxpayers' money is being spent. But the health minister insisted today that department heads have discretionary power to make decisions on training for civil servants to meet operational needs. The director of health uh, is exercising an appropriate uh, delegated authority from the Civil Service Bureau according to established procedures and practices. Co acknowledged that the Justice Department is there to provide legal advice for all government branches, but argued that health officials with legal expertise would be helpful for his department. He pointed out that the decision was carefully made and the department's operations won't be affected. Troy has also signed a commitment letter promising to remain with the department for no less than three years after completing her barrister training. But some lawmakers are not satisfied with the explanation. Pro-establishment legislator Regina Ip said this was an unusual case, looking back at her own experience as a senior civil servant. Most of the time, civil servants have to take their own no-pay leave to attend courses of their own choosing. And strictly speaking, all, our, all departments can argue that they need senior officers with legal knowledge. So I think uh, the Secretary for Food and Health really needs to give more detailed and convincing explanation. The health department said Troy was picked to go overseas on full paid study leave because she already has a legal background. And the department is dealing with more international health regulations these days. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. Development Secretary Paul Chan has played down concerns over the government's decision to offer the first two sites under the Hong Kong Property for Hong Kong People scheme to a mainland developer. He urged people not to jump to conclusions over price estimate for flats to be built on a Kai Tai plot, but even tycoon Lee Shao Ki is complaining it's too much. Chief Executive Lan Chunying first touted his Hong Kong property for Hong Kong people policy in September as a populist measure to address public concerns that cash rich buyers from the mainland were driving up flat prices to record levels here. Two plots of land at Kai Tak were chosen for this purpose, with some of Hong Kong's biggest developers, including Henderson Land and Sanong Kai, applying for the sites before tenders closed last Friday. But in an ironic twist, China Overseas Land and Investment, a state-owned enterprise, beat 27 other bidders and paid $4.54 billion for the two sites, a price tag that's higher than surveyors' estimates. The government's decision to award the tender to the mainland developer is not the only issue that has raised eyebrows. Some surveyors are already pointing out that the completed flats may cost as much as $13,000 per square foot at today's prices in terms of saleable area to generate a profit. Those prices would defeat the purpose of banning mainlanders from buying these flats as most Hong Kong people would not be able to afford them. Henderson land boss Li Shaoqi also waded into the debate today, saying the land price was too high. He noted that the number of mainlanders buying flats here has already dropped since the government raised stamp duties to curb speculation. Before setting off for Taiwan, Development Secretary Paul Chan said there's nothing unusual about developers with interests outside of Hong Kong wanting to invest in projects here. He also urged people not to jump to conclusions over price estimates as these are based on current market conditions which may change in future. At least 1,145 flats have to be built on the two Kai Tak plots of land. The development secretary also said the government will announce more measures within the next two months to increase Hong Kong's housing supply, including its controversial Northeast New Territories development plans. Earlier this week, Li Shaoqi gave details of two of the seven sites of New Territories land he's offered to donate to the government to build affordable homes for young people. But he doesn't want to pay land premium and is leaving it to the government to sort out matters such as infrastructure support. Chan said today the government will have to examine if the land is suitable for residential purposes before deciding whether to accept the offer. South Korea has accepted an offer by its rival North Korea to hold talks aimed at normalizing their commercial relations. Pyongyang's unexpected announcement is seen as a softening of its stance after a recent barrage of military threats against Seoul and the U.S. North Korea appears to be trying to break the ice in its frosty relations with South Korea. We propose talks between North and South for the normalization of commercial relations, a news presenter on Pyongyang state-run TV announced this morning. Specifically, the North is seeking the reopening of the joint Kaesong Industrial Complex, one of the few sources of hard revenue for cash-trapped Pyongyang. The Kaesong zone, just inside the North's shared border with the South, was shut in April at the height of tensions between the two sides. 
Pyongyang also proposed resuming tours to a popular mountain resort in the north and a new round of reunions between relatives split by the Korean War more than half a century ago. Today's announcement has left analysts puzzling about the intentions of the North's young ruler, Kim Jong-un. In March, Pyongyang unleashed a barrage of military threats against the South and the U.S. The shrill warnings came after the U.N. imposed fresh sanctions against the North after it launched a long-range missile in December and followed it up with its third nuclear test in February. The rhetoric has now died down and hopes were raised when Kim sent a senior envoy last month to Beijing, the North's closest ally. Although General Cho ryong hae was given a cool reception, he met President Xi Jinping, who told him that North Korea should focus on kick-starting its economy and not on military prowess. That message has apparently got through to Kim, but given the high unpredictability of the North, many will be waiting to see if the offer of talks is genuine or will come with strings attached. For its part, the ministry...